Happy Sabbath, everybody. Welcome back to another Sabbath online. Last Sabbath, we explored the impact of choices and how it changes our lives. There's a quote I wanted to share, and it goes like this. Higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for His children. This is Education, page 18, paragraph 4. It says here that God's dream for us are better than anything we could imagine for ourselves. But what if I told you that it is possible, that it is within our reach, and that it has everything to do with our choices? Now, of course, I'm not trying to downplay God's miraculous powers, but God also operates in a logical system that He has blessed that if we take part in it, we will experience great results. I know you've heard or read this before, but notice the progress, the process that it goes through. It says, watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Now, notice the red words. It says, watch your thoughts, words, actions, habits, character, and destiny. The words become our actions, and actions become our habits, and habits become our character, and our character determines our destiny. You know, how many of us um, have tried to change our character and failed? How many of us have been struggling to change our, your habits. How many have tried to speak better words, but it just the, always, it seems like always the wrong things come out? Once the domino effect starts, there is little that we can do to stop it. We hear people say things like, it's just the way I am, I, I can't change. But notice something here with me. If our thoughts become words, and our words become actions and habits and character and destiny, wouldn't it be fair to say that our thoughts determine our destiny? Then doesn't this mean that if we have good thoughts, that we will speak good words, then that will lead to good actions, and that will turn into good habits, and that will make us more respectable in character, right? Everything starts with a thought. The Bible is clear about this. It says in Proverbs 23 verse 7, For as he thinks within himself, so is he. The Bible is very clear. Our thoughts make up the fundamental framework of who we are as a person. Everything we do, everything in life begins with the thoughts. Furthermore, in the book Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 1, page 235, it says, For the only security for any soul is right thinking. There's little to misread here. There's little room for misunderstanding. So basically, you, you want to be a good person, then you must start thinking in a different direction. You want to speak better and kinder words? Your thoughts must change. But how do we change our thinking? How do we change our thoughts? Well, the hint is that we should read good books. Because our thoughts are 100% based on input. Our thoughts are 100% based on what we read, watch, and listen to. Today I want to focus on like the reading part as a little more. But of course the first question would be, is reading really that important? Let's ask the successful people. Mark Cuban reads more than three hours a day. Bill Gates reads about 50 books per year, which breaks down to one per week. Elon Musk is an avid reader, and when asked how he learned to build rockets, he said, I read books. Mark Zuckerberg resolved to read a book every two weeks throughout 2015. So these people read, but the question is, do they just read anything? Huffington Post had an article that said, but successful people don't just read anything. They are highly selective about what they read, opting to be educated over being entertained. They believe that good books are a gateway to learning and knowledge. So they're saying there's a difference between the way the successful people read 
and the unsuccessful people. It says, in fact, there is a notable difference between the reading habits of the wealthy and not so wealthy. There is a difference. According to Tom Corley, author of Rich Habits, the daily success habits of wealthy individuals, rich people whose annual income of $160,000 or more and a liquid net worth of $3.2 million plus read for self-improvement, education, and success. Whereas poor people, annual income of $35,000 or less and a liquid net worth of $5,000 or less read primarily to be entertained. I believe that this principle applies to our choice of books as well as movies or music. If our primary purpose of reading, watching, and listening is for entertainment, then we will not benefit from it. You see, let me make this clear. I'm not against recreation or leisure, but the fact is that if our standard of reading, watching, and listening is purely entertainment, the level of quality will drop over time. But you might be saying, okay, but they're already successful, right? They're already rich, so they, they're thinking differently than the rest of us. And let me show you something remarkable here. In the book called Originals by Adam Grant, this is what it says. Remarkably, there are studies showing that when children's stories emphasize original achievements, the next generation innovates more. In one study, psychologists tracked unique accomplishments in American children's stories from 1800 to 1950. After original achievements themes in American children's books rose by 66% from 1810 to 1850, the patent rate shot up sevenfold from 1850 to 1890. There's actual records of how children's books containing um, stories of original achievements or inventions impacting their lives long term. You see, when original achievements or inventions were the focus of the children's books from 1800s to 1850s, the number of new inventions jumped seven times. That's an incredible number. Think with me for a second. When children's minds were inundated with stories or the possibilities of original achievements that they too could accomplish, their minds knew no limit. This impacted what they talked about as children. This impacted what they did with their time. This impacted the attitude that they had to failures. And ultimately, they made their mark in history as incredible inventors. Now, of course, they're not perfect people. I'm not saying that they, were, they didn't make any mistakes, that they were morally upright people, but at least they accomplished what they thought that they should do to improve the quality of life for humanity. I dare say that these books impacted their thoughts and their thoughts affected their destiny. You see, if the primary focus of our reading, watching, and listening is for entertainment, we will not see the need to improve other people's lives as these people did. Now, of course, you might ask, who were these people? They were Thomas Edison, Ford, Watson, uh, Gillette, the Wright brothers, the list goes on, right? The inventions included vacuum cleaners, air conditioners, neon lights, crayons, tractors, cereal, Model T, instant coffee, motion picture, lifesavers, the, the, the candy. When children read books that focus on original achievements or inventions, they changed history. The fact that the 20th century was the age of inventions is proof that reading changes lives and history then I wouldn't be unfair to say that our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with other people will be directly affected by the reading of the Bible. So I want to ask you again, what are you reading? And are you reading the Bible? In Mind, Character, and Personality, it says, As an educating power, the Bible is without a rival. 
Nothing will so impart vigor to all the faculties as requiring students to grasp the stupendous truths of revelation. The mind gradually adapts itself to the subjects upon which it is allowed to dwell. If occupied with commonplace matters only, to the exclusion of the grand and lofty themes, it will become dwarfed and enfeebled. If never required to grapple with the difficult problems or to put to stretch to comprehend the important truths, it will, after a time, almost lose the power of growth. It says the mind gradually adapts itself to the subjects upon which it is allowed to dwell. If the goal of what we watch, read, and listen to is for entertainment, our mind will not grow. If we read the Bible and see the beautiful message of love, and if we read good books, our mind will be forced to be challenged, to grow, to wrestle with, to grapple with difficult subjects, making us better people, making us more beneficial to society at large. Galatians 4.12 says it as it is. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is where we come in regards to the important role of choice in our lives. What we sow, we will reap. What we read, watch, and listen to will affect our thoughts, which will in turn affect our words, our actions, our habits, our character, and ultimately our destiny. Do you want to be a better person? Do you want to grow in your relationship with God and other people? Read the Bible and read other good books. More recently, I, as I listened carefully to the words of many of the popular Korean songs from movies or dramas, is that they all sound really nice because, of course, they're sung by really good singers, but many of them are super depressing. Lincoln's biographer William Barton wrote that Mr. Lincoln read the Bible, honored it, quoted it freely, and it became so much a part of him as visibly and permanently to give shape to his literary style and his habits of thought. Lincoln to this day is still considered the best president of U.S. history. And he is known to have said, everything I know I learned from books. You can look through history. Every successful person was a reader. Same way in our Christian experience, we cannot grow in our relationship with God unless we are actively, daily reading the Bible. When we read the Bible, when we see how much God loves us and God loves other people, the way we think about God and the way we think about others will change and the way we treat them will change and the way they think about us will change. And our lives in totality will be different. So I want, to, I want to repeat this statement. You make choices and your choices will make you. What choices are you making today? Who you will be tomorrow is the result of your choices today. Hitler wanted to be remembered as an artist, but no one does because of his choices. We all want to grow in our spiritual lives. We all want to know God more. But in what direction is our choices taking us? I've entitled this sermon, Just Do It. If you just read the Bible, if you just read good books, if you just listen to good music, if you just watch good things like good movies, then I promise you, they will affect your thoughts and they will affect your words, they will affect your actions and your habits and your character. Just do it and you will see the difference because the Bible is clear that what we sow we will reap. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And even in the book Mind, Character, and Personality, it says that the only safety for any soul, there is no exception, for any soul is right thinking. So please, 
Spend time reading the Word, and I promise you, your life will change. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the power that you've given us and our ability to choose. Help us to make the most of it. Help us to make choices in the right direction so that you may be glorified and people, including ourselves, will be blessed. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.